Hello peoples! I hope you're all doing well out there. It's another uh, wonderful day here in Arizona. The wind is going crazy as you can see. It's really kicking out there today. Gusts 35 to 40 miles an hour. And look, I just saw some raindrops. It wasn't actually supposed to rain today. Uh, that's not a good thing because I need to have the roof dry because tomorrow is the big solar install and yes, it's raining. You know, I just checked the weather and it's had 0% chance of rain and here is rain, so, I don't know, that's typical. So, six months ago today, I made my first video log or vlog talking about my unemployment and my uh, issues and how I was looking for a job and possibly uh, was going to move into an RV. And here we are, six months later, I have my own RV. I'm almost done with all the major stuff that needs to be done on it. And I'm probably about a month away from actually doing my first real trip in this thing. It's, uh, currently right now, it's, I don't know exactly what day, I think it's like April, April 8th, I think, because it was October 8th was my uh, initial video that I did for, for this. Um, that tomorrow's going to be the big solar install, which means I need to clean the roof and get the panels and stuff all prepared. Obviously, I'm not going to clean the roof now because it's raining. So I'll do the cleaning of the roof tomorrow, but I will prepare all the panels today and put the brackets and stuff on. I figure out where I'm gonna put everything. I'll show you real quick. Here's the Renogy Commander. Uh, it's gonna go right down here into this slot, like that, but uh, but mounted to the wall, mounted to the wood, I mean. And then I'll just run the cables over the battery box. Um, over to, you know, put the negative ground there, then the positive on the switch. And then, uh, run the LAN cable. Which means to take this damn thing off again. It's so hard to put it back on, but... I need to fit one more cable in there. So I need to put a uh, Ethernet cable... Through, up the wall, through the bathroom. And I'm gonna mount... This, which is the... Renogy MT50. I plan to mount it like that. So it'll be something like that. And that'll be it for the major electronics, major electrical stuff. Honestly, I'm kind of sick of plugging this thing in every day and having to charge it off my buddy's uh, electric. I know he's getting kind of PO'd about that. Oh, uh, maybe not, but you know, I, I don't like soaking up on things that cost a lot of money and I know electric isn't cheap. And besides, once the panels are on this thing, uh, basic energy use will be covered by the sun. Even on a cloudy day, even on a day like today where it's overcast, it's still get a lot of still get a lot of power. I probably still get a third of my two hundred watts, which is plenty to uh, keep the batteries topped up. And that's really all the solar does. The solar is just designed to get you that last 20% of your battery. Like, basically to get from 50 to 80% requires a lot of wattage. So what you want to do, and in my case, will be probably, uh, first thing I do when I get up will be kick on the generator, run it for like an hour, hour and a half to get to that 80%, and then let the solar handle the rest of the day. And then I'll just run the batteries down at night until I go to sleep, and you know, rinse, repeat. Now, there's going to be some days I probably won't even need to run the generator. If I'm not using my PC, I probably, you know, if I'm just using the laptop and some basic stuff, uh, I won't really need that much power. I can still run the microwave and stuff for a couple of minutes. That's no problem. So, really, it's all about how much PC use you know, do I really need in a day? And that's going to depend on, do I want to do, like, photo and video editing? 
I'm going to be doing lots of photography on when I'm out. So I'm going to probably wind up doing an hour or two a day just of that. And uh, I don't really think the little laptop, I don't know if I ever showed you guys a laptop. This is the, the laptop that my friend gave me because he didn't really need it anymore. It's a, it's an older model, but it's fine. It works just fine. It's a uh, HP uh, Pavilion DM1, I think it is. It's got the dual core 1.6 gigahertz. It's got dedicated graphics, dedicated uh, AMD graphics card, which means it's, it is possible to use it for gaming, for some light gaming. See, it's got the AMD sticker on it. It runs Windows 7, which I, which is what I like and what I prefer. I, I'm not. Uh, I make the announcement now, in case you haven't figured it out. I'm not an Apple guy, a Mac guy. I do not own or buy Mac or Apple products. Uh, that's just me. That's just my preference, my opinion. I've always been, always will be a PC guy. So, um, you know, personally, I like the configuration aspect of them easy upgradeability. They're cheap, way cheaper than Apple products, uh, but you get the same. You get the same performance. You can run the same software. I got Photoshop, Premiere. I got all the same stuff that most people run on their Macs. I have on my PC. So uh, when I do these, the, the video editing, it's going to be on my PC using Adobe Premiere. I haven't even started the editing yet. I'm just learning right now how to run the program. And uh, I don't really know if that laptop's gonna gonna cut doing basic photo editing. I might be able to do Lightroom on it and do Lightroom style editing. I mean, even that Lightroom is a real resource hog. It's kind of hard to. It, on my PC, it runs all eight cores at like 100% when it's doing the previews. Until that, it actually does the preview build. It it uses a lot of power until that. So. I'm guessing that the, that, that the laptop isn't going to cut that. As part of my vlog anniversary, which is today, like I said, is a six month vlog anniversary, uh, the first time I've done a video, I just want to say that I feel way better now than I did six months ago. Um, physically, mentally, I feel like I'm doing the right thing. I feel like this is exactly where I should be going at this point in my life. I'm a solid 20 years away from collecting Social Security, so it's not like I could just vent on my ass and do nothing. Uh, but on the other hand, I'm still young enough and almost healthy enough to uh, do what I'm doing. And I think if I waited another 5 or 10 years to try to do this, I wouldn't be able to physically do it. You know, really this is like my last chance, my last hurrah to make a big change in my life. This is like my midlife crisis. I sold everything I owned. I sold both of my cars. I had a brand new muscle car. Got rid of. Envy of the town. Everybody loved that car. Got rid of that. Got rid of my old and faithful um, sedan. Then I got rid of all my furniture, furniture that I bought brand new and paid a lot of money for, leather couches, got rid of my uh, iron wrought bed, uh, queen size bed, got rid of like all kinds of musical gear, I got rid of all my guitars, my amps, my drums, uh, I had a full studio and I had basically converted bedroom into a studio, saw some uh, footage of that earlier of me repairing the walls in the studio. And, uh, man, if that feels like another lifetime. I've only been at my friend's house for about seven weeks now. So I've been, I've been doing the van almost every day. I wouldn't say almost every, well, almost every day. There, there's there been a few days where I skipped because of either weather or I had other stuff I needed to do. Or I needed to just be social. You know, there were days we had to go to Phoenix or uh, Flagstaff, and, you know, that takes a lot of time. There were days I was waiting for stuff to come in, or, you know, supplies I needed to get. 
I mean, it took a full day just to get the plywood, you know, go down to basically the drive down to the major store, which is like half hour away down to Lowe's to get the plywood cut. So I was walking through the store, have a guy help us, and all that stuff. Then I got the pipes. Same day I got the, the plywood cut for the bed, I got the pipes for the antenna. So, I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm progressing not as fast as I would like with the van, but it's fast enough that I'm not saying, oh, this sucks, I'm not ever going to get it done. But right now, today, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about what I'm doing. Uh, the path I'm taking, the decisions I've made, uh, this is a very, very risky venture. To sell everything you own and be unemployed for over a year. I don't have a job. This is my only transportation. This is my only home. I do have it fully insured. I made sure when I got my full-timers RV insurance that I put I put what I paid for this, which is way more than what they think it's worth, and I got a major coverage that covers everything inside. And I'm gonna make sure that when I'm done, before I hit the road, I'm taking pictures of everything for insurance purposes. So if anything would happen to the van, at least I'd get the money back. It would devastate me because of all the work I put in, but at least I'd get the money back. So, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, I'm actually getting very eager to, to get out of here. And it's not that, you know, I don't like my friends or I don't like being here. You know, living with a family, basically, is what I'm doing. I'm living with a family. But, I, you know, I look out here. You know, I look at the clouds and the horizon and I see all that stuff. And I go, you know, what? I'd, I'd, I'd like to be out there right now. You know, I'd like to be out there. You know, in the desert, weather's perfect, right? It's like, it's 70 degrees. It's just like 72 degrees, it says over there. It's like, man, I'm going to be out there. You know, I wish I had my solar up there, and I'd just go out there and spend a week, spend a straight week out there just doing whatever I want to do. You know, photography, get on my computer, make videos, you know, take my cat on walks, do some hiking. Uh, one of the things I'm considering is a second mode of transport. I don't know how I'm going to haul. I really would like to get a scooter or something motor powered so I can go up hills and stuff easier. Basically go further, longer, and faster wherever I need to go. Uh, also, in case the van ever breaks down, I'll have a way to say, I'm, say it breaks down in an area where there's no signal even with the antenna. I'd be fucked. Um, I would need to find a way to get to a place that has a signal to make the phone call. So I'm considering either a, a bicycle that I can put like an electric motor on it or like a gas powered, really cheap gas powered scooter which you can get for like three, four hundred bucks. Well the problem is hauling it, you know, because I'm going to have the big basket on the back. I'm already using the trailer hitch in the back for the big cargo basket. Uh, that's probably already going to push the weight of, because I think the basket will let you hold 300 pounds or something. I couldn't put a scooter on top of that. I've seen people put trailer hitches on the front to mount scooters and mount their bicycles and stuff on the front. So I'm just going to have to think about that, because it. I definitely want to have some kind of secondary mode of transport. But that's not really a primary issue right now. I'm just gonna have to hope that my cell phone booster will work anywhere I go, and then I can make that phone call to uh, it's Good Sam's Club RV uh, coverage towing, whatever they call it. I got their their regular service that that'll tow you like up to 500 miles or something to the nearest service center. So I feel pretty good about that. So if I do break down, I can just call them, or if I get a flat tire or run out of gas or anything, they'll come out. So. It was a, it was like 80 bucks for the year, and the funny thing is, by the time I get on the road, like it'll be basically half gone, right? I didn't even need it for the first six months. But I wanted to get it when I drove out here, just in case I broke down on the way. 
because this is an old van, and I wasn't really sure about it then. I mean, I'm sure about it now because it's been to, it's been to two mechanics, and I've gotten all the major stuff fixed. So, um, you know, knocking on wood that that it'll be solid from this point on. All right, I got about a minute left before this thing cuts out. I got a, I got a lot of work to do today. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is I got this Intel. I know it's dirty because I just uh, finger got my fingerprints all over it. It's a Z83. It's an 8350 processor. It's a mini PC is, is what it is. It has 12-volt uh, power which is important, obviously. Uh, USB 3, HDMI, gigabit LAN, a headphone jack. It's got Bluetooth 4, uh, Wi-Fi N. I don't think it's AC. I think it's Wi-Fi N. And it has a second monitor output. Like if you want to use an analog monitor for monitor 2, which I do have an analog input on this monitor here. They may do that. So I can run, actually run two monitors on this. But basically what this is going to do is this is going to run my JBOD, which is uh, just a bunch of disks. It's basically uh, hard drives in an enclosure that uh, store all my data. I don't keep my data on my PC. I don't keep it on my laptop. I keep it in these hard drives in their own enclosure. Because I do that, I have no way to put that data on the network. It's basically, I'm going to have a wired and a wireless network in the van, which will allow me to use the laptop, use the PC, use my tablet, use my phone, and use this miniature PC on the internet. Because really, the hard part was getting my phone, which is giving me my internet connection, shared on everything in here. Now, yeah, you can do a wireless hotspot, but... Um, that has its own issues. So what I decided to do instead was to get, uh, I don't know if I even mentioned it yet, but I got a, a, a Pepwave Soho Mark III um, Surf, I think it's called. And it's a router that has uh, four, four or five gigabit ports on it. It does wireless AC. Um, it also has a USB port where you can put, you can actually tether your phone to the, the router and then it will rebroadcast that internet connection from your phone to all the devices in your vehicle. It's made for, it's basically made for offices and stuff, but it's also for like RVs. So that actually has gigabit ports on it and it has Wi-Fi. So for the gigabit ports, I'll plug in this device. So this will be hardwired in using that, that Ethernet port. And my PC, which is going to, as you guys already know, it's going to go in this hole when everything is, is said and done. Those two will be wired up gigabit. And then everything else will be wireless. Uh, so the laptop will be wireless. My tablet will be wireless. And my phone will be wireless. So basically I'll have Wi-Fi signal for all that. And it'll be a nice strong Wi-Fi that I could use outside the van. Um, one of the bad things about the, the phone hotspots is they are very, very weak. There's not a lot of power output on them. So you go more than a couple feet away, they don't work. This way, I'll have Wi-Fi probably 100 to 200 yards away from the van. So I'll be able to even sit at a picnic table or whatever outside and still have access to the Internet. Um, that's going to be important for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them is it allows me to tether my camera to my phone. And uh, you can't do that if you have a Wi-Fi hotspot going. Because the Wi-Fi can only be used for one thing when you're doing a Wi-Fi hotspot. Basically, it uses your data connection to broadcast your Wi-Fi. Well, if you're in hotspot mode, you can't tether your camera. Because I have a DSLR camera. You can't tether it to your phone if you're using the Wi-Fi for Internet. So what it'll do is it'll allow me to use the... Uh, it'll allow me to tether to my phone or tether to my camera, I mean, and then uh, I'll be able to GPS uh, GPS tag my pictures. So if I'm taking pictures around the van, it'll automatically tag it with the GPS coordinates. And I have plans to do uh, like a Google Maps thing where I can post that later on, where uh, yeah, people can see where I took, actually took the pictures from. So, but this is getting long-winded. I do have a lot of stuff to do today.
those are just like I just talked today a little bit about where I'm at and what I'm thinking about doing in the future. So hopefully the fans not being too noisy. So uh, all right, I'm gonna get busy. At least the rain stopped. It's still windy as hell out there. Well, until next time. Okay, here's what we're doing today. We're setting up the mini PC to see if it will run uh, directly off the 12 volts without blowing up or clocking out, or will it need a buck converter? Um, a buck converter basically reduces the voltage. Um, the maximum voltage that I wind up pulling or actually producing in this van would be 14.4 volts because all the chargers, the charger from the alternator, the solar charger and the regular battery charger are all put out a maximum of 14.4 volts. So that's as high as the system will ever be. Now, what I'm doing right now is I have my very accurate uh, meter plugged into the 12 volt system. I have the mini PC, which runs on 12 volts. Then I have my JBOD, which is basically it's just a hard drive enclosure. It also runs on 12 volts, and I have two old hard drives in it. And the reason why I'm using old hard drives is just in case something goes wrong. Um, I'm not going to admit what happened last week, which is why I haven't had any uh, videos for a couple of days. But let's just say that um, there was a failure in this system, and there were some problems I had to resolve. This is the buck converter, which is currently set to put out 12.6 volts. But since right now the van only has 12.1, it puts out one volt less. So it's putting out only 11 volts right now. Now 11 volts is no problem for this. I've actually found out that this will boot as low as 10 volts. So as long as it's got at least 10 volts coming out of this thing, it'll boot. Now what this does is this regulates the power so that it, it won't exceed 12.6 volts no matter what. And the reason why I did that is because this is a very low wattage appliance. This only requires, at the most, 7 watts of power, and that's when everything is running full bore. Now, since it's a computer, it's very sensitive to voltages. Um, if it's too high, the components will overheat and burn out. So that's what I'm trying to prevent here. Now, this... I'm hoping it's a little more robust because basically all you got is there's a board down there. I don't know if you can see it. But there's a board that converts the USB and the power coming in and all that stuff before it puts it into the hard drives. So I think the chances are pretty low that I'd actually burn up a hard drive during this test. But I do have just old backup drives on there just in case. And I'm using two because that's how, how many I'm going to have when I'm on the road. So, um, right now I have this turned off because it will not boot at 11 volts. It requires more power than this thing can put out. So what I'm thinking about doing is just leaving the mini, mini PC on this. Because it will boot as low as... Um, I had it... It was like 9 something volts and it was still running. So I think that'll be fine. And this thing is only designed for like... Uh, I think it was two amps or two and a half amps anyway, so it's not like it actually puts out uh, more than about 20 watts of power. Now the real problem is this. Um, it's not going to run off the buck converter. I'm going to try plugging it directly in. This line here is directly into the 12 volt system with no kind of fuse. Well, it does have a fuse on it, but but with no kind of breaker or regulator that will prevent the voltage from getting more than uh, 12 volts. So basically when, this, when the van's being charged at 14.4 volts, 14.4 volts is what's going to come out of this. And that may be a problem, although I think this is robust enough to take 14 volts. I'm about to find out. So here we go. So what I'm going to do is unplug this from the, from the buck converter. And I'm going to plug it directly in to the 12 volt, which right now is 12 volts. That'll boot no problem. So what I'm going to do now is go turn the, the shore power on and see what happens. 
Okay, as you can see, it's now bumped up to 14 volts and climbing because now the charger's on. And in fact, the charger is doing some serious uh, charging. 500 watts worth of charging, in fact. So we're now at 14.1 volts. And that'll pretty quickly get it to 14.2. Then it's gonna, it'll be a slow climb from there to 14.4. But this is typical of what I can expect while I'm running the generator or if I have the uh, the ignition on and the engine running, I'll wind up getting, you know, 14.2, 14.3 volts. Now, I'm gonna kick this on and cross my damn fingers that nothing blows up. I do feel the fan come on, which is a good sign. Now, if everything worked properly, we'll see. Oh, there's one, and there's the other. It looks like it works just fine at 14 volts. Um, only time's gonna tell, though, because it may overheat and wind up burning out the board where the power comes in. Like I said, I'm not really worried that it's gonna burn out the hard drives. Not at 14 volts. I don't really think it's gonna be that that touchy for power. Now you can see the buck converter is at a solid 12.6 and that's because of course there's at least 14 volts coming through. So the computer will not get more than 12.6 volts and that's just what I have it set at for now. I'm just going to use the buck converter for the little PC and then uh, I think I'll just plug this straight into the 12 volt system and hope that it doesn't burn out. <laughs> Uh, they're pretty expensive to replace. They're almost 100 bucks to replace the enclosure. But really, the, the thing that I'm more worried about is burning down a drive. So, Well, it looks like experiment number one so far has been a success. I'm going to leave this running as is while the van charges and uh, see if any overheating or issues happen with these hard drives. So uh, and now the battery's going to die on the camera, so I'm going to have to go in and recharge it. That's going to be it for today. So until next time. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Ernie.